Hey guys, what's up? We got a little bit of a different video planned today. This was the original style of Dinosaur Facts videos, but I gave up because the scripts were really boring. But we're giving them another shot. This one's going to be an introduction to Earth's history and some basic dinosaur classifications. Just some groundwork for the rest of your paleontological knowledge. So let's start off with Earth's timeline. It's kind of like the FNAF timeline, but with no animatronic bears and no pizza and a lot more boring parts. The Earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago when some gas and dust decided to be a little less boring and a little more sphere-like. Its history is split into four eras, the Precambrian, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Each of these are vastly different from each other and are also divided into smaller segments called periods. The Precambrian, which is both a period and an era, was pretty boring because in terms of life, nothing happened for millions of years until some little single-celled fellas showed up. It was from 4.5 billion years ago to 541 million years ago. Now on to the Paleozoic Era, the era where life diversified and began to thrive on both land and sea. This is the largest era and has the most diverse groups of life and a struggle for dominance between different animal groups. The Cambrian was from 541 million years ago to 485 million years ago. It is characterized by the Cambrian Explosion, which is when all the little cells decided to be cooler and work together. It is thanks to the Cambrian Explosion that organisms such as this exist. Let us say our thanks. The Ordovician period from 485 million years ago to 444 million years ago saw life continuing to flourish, with fish particularly taking a hold, developing jaws near the end of the period. It also saw the beginning of the first plant life on land. This period ended in the Ordovician Silurian extinction which killed up to 85% of life. During the Silurian period, some animals began to experiment with the land, but other than that, this period's pretty boring. We actually, we hate the Silurian period. It's really stupid. During the Devonian period, plant life began to take hold and forests spread across the continents. It is also called the Age of Fishes, which is a pretty epic name, as this is where they truly began to dominate the aquatic environment. And you would think in all that time to evolve, they'd be able to handle the plastic we throw in the ocean, but apparently not. This period also ended with a mass extinction. The Carboniferous period was really awesome because it saw lots of animals like amphibians and gigantic insects emerge. A lot of kind of funny creatures lived in this period. The bugs from this period are juiced harder than the Liver King and you do not want the smoke. The Permian period mostly consisted of reptilian diversification over a vast desert continent known as Pangaea, where forests had turned to deserts after the Carboniferous where many plants died out. This is the last period before dinosaurs and the Mesozoic era, and to be honest, is kind of a filler episode. But it brings it home with the twist ending. The Permian period ended with the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, known as the Great Dying, where up to 95% of life was destroyed because of catastrophic volcanic eruptions that led to an increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and acidification of the ocean. Now, the Mesozoic Era, which is the most important because it's the one with dinosaurs. It only has three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So if you take anything from this video, remember these periods, because they're awesome. The Triassic period, from 252 million years ago to 201 million years ago, was again dominated by reptiles, with the emergence of mammals, dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and marine reptiles taking place in this period. The Triassic featured a mostly hot and arid climate, it ended in a mass extinction, killing about 35% of life. Kind of a pussy mass extinction, if I'm being honest. Which really was the balance patch that the dinosaurs needed to take control of the planet. The Jurassic period, from 201 to 145 million years ago, was the period where dinosaurs truly took control and became the dominant animals in the world. This period saw the emergence of birds, which evolved from a branch of dinosaurs. It was also the period where Pangaea began to break apart to form the continents we know today. No, don't pull! No! Ah! Let's play a game. How many of these dinosaurs from the Jurassic Park franchise actually appeared in the Jurassic period? Leave your guess in the comments. Ha! Huh? 
the Cretaceous period from 145 million years ago to 66 million years ago was the final period of the Mesozoic era, as well as dinosaur domination. And the early Cretaceous was actually known as the Golden Age of Dinosaurs. It also saw the emergence of flowering plants and pollinators along with them. It ended in a mass extinction that killed over 75% of life on Earth, including all non-avian dinosaurs. Clearly, Earth peaked, and just look now at how far we've fallen. <laughs> now on to the final era, the Cenozoic. This is the era that we live in today, and includes all Ice Age animals. This is the era that saw the rise of mammals as the dominant group, as they were able to fill the vacuum left by the extinction of dinosaurs. The Paleogene was the period where mammals diversified from small rodent-sized animals into the ancestors of what would become everything from horses to dogs to elephants. The Neogene, from 23 to 2 million years ago, saw additional evolution of mammals and birds into their modern forms, and the first distant ancestors of humans evolved, and learned to make tools towards the end of the period. The globe also cooled considerably during this period. The Quaternary period began a little over 2 million years ago and is the period that we currently live in. Homo sapiens first evolved during this time, roughly 300,000 years ago, and is characterized by a cyclical growth of continental ice sheets. Also, these weird monkeys became smart and kind of fucked up the atmosphere and made Reddit, so overall this period's pretty bad. Now, most of these periods will be largely unimportant for most videos on the channel, but they're still interesting to learn about. The Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods within the Mesozoic era are really the ones to remember. Now that we understand these time frames, let's discuss the evolution and different groups of dinosaurs. Before we start, one important note. These and these are not dinosaurs. This is an important distinction, and if I hear any of you call them dinosaurs around me, I'm going to lose it. The pterosaurs, while closely related to dinosaurs, are still not dinosaurs, and form their own order apart from Dinosauria, called Pterosauria. The marine reptiles are also not part of the Dinosauria order, and are part of many different orders like Squamata, Plesiosauria, and Ichthyosauria. The dinosaur family tree splits off into two main compartments, Sauracecia, or the lizard-hipped dinosaurs, and Ornithocecia, or the bird-hipped dinosaurs. New research suggests that maybe this is a stupid perspective and that it should be changed, but they're really not sure yet, so we're going to stick with this for now. Sauracecia contains two major groups, Theropoda and Sauropoda morpha. Basically, Theropoda contains all of the meat-eating dinosaurs you think of, like the T-Rex. This contains vastly different families like Tyrannosaurids, Spinosaurids, Abelosaurids, and Dromaeosaurids. It also contains omnivorous and herbivorous families like the Ornithomimids, Therizinosaurids, and Oviraptorids. These are the only dinosaurs that survived the Cretaceous extinction and still live today, in the form of birds. Which, to be honest, is kind of a pussy downgrade, but at least cassowaries are pretty cool, I guess. Sauropodomorpha contains the long-necked dinosaurs, like Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus. This includes families like Plateosaurids, Titanosaurids, and Brachiosaurids. These animals ate plants, with some prosauropods also eating small animals, and some grew to be the biggest animals to ever walk the earth. While often portrayed as chill-ass dudes, if modern herbivores are any indication, these guys were probably complete dickheads. Ornithocecia contains three major groups, Thyreophora, Ornithopoda, and Marginocephalia. Thyreophora was the group of dinosaurs with armored backs and dangerous tails, like the Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus. These dinosaurs were all herbivorous and evolved these defenses and weapons to protect from carnivores. They were complete ops for the local carnivore population and would have been a very dangerous meal. Thyreophora contained families such as Notosaurids, Ankylosaurids, and Stegosaurids. Ornithopoda held the duck-billed dinosaurs and other herbivores that lived in large herds and were fast-moving. They were common dinosaurs at their time and likely were primary prey items for many carnivores, kind of the cows of their day. This group consisted of families such as Dryosaurids, Iguanodontids, and Hadrosaurids. Finally, Marginocephalia was the group of dinosaurs with protection on their skulls. 
The most famous dinosaur of this group would be the Triceratops, even though they've got a way cooler cousin, but it's whatever. These herbivores were extremely dangerous and likely territorial and aggressive. This group contained Pachycephalosaurids, Protoceratopsids, and Ceratopsids. And that's all your basic information. If you ever need a refresher, this video will be here, and so will Google. Thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs>